This video is brought to you by Audible. In my opinion, the inner workings of the DC Comics multiverse is one of the most fascinating subjects in all of mainstream superhero comics. But specifically, there are few subjects that are more interesting to me as the seven entities that make up the most powerful group of its cosmos. The Endless. Created by writer Neil Gaiman during his seminal work The Sandman, The Endless are as powerful as they are mysterious. But after reading so, so, so much Sandman stuff recently, I'm going to try to do my best to explain who they are, where they came from, what they're capable of, and all of that without making things too complicated. So. Let's see how that goes. But before we jump too far into things, I need to give a big thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Audible, because they just released their original Sandman audiobook, and this thing has been decades in the making. Follow Morpheus, the Dream Lord, as he's pulled from the Dream Realm and imprisoned on Earth. When he finally escapes, he must restore power to rebuild his dominion, and that's just the start. I've heard some great audiobooks before, but the vocal work and sound mixing on this one is next level. It's very cinematic and gives a grandiose weight to the series series, which is very appropriate given the large scale of the subject matter. This was a clear passion project, and the attention to detail is stunning. Dude, this is an incredible way to experience the series, with an all-star cast of James McAvoy as Dream, Neil Gaiman himself as the narrator, and other incredible talents like Riz Ahmed, Kat Dennings, Michael Sheen, and more. If anything in this video is interesting to you, then this is a great place to start, so go ahead and go to audible.com slash the Sandman and experience it for yourself. But anyway, back to the video. Before the beginning of all things, there was the night, and the night was without boundaries, and the night was without end. In the beginning was time, the relentless beat in which things could happen, in which everything could become. Dust could coalesce, matter could exist. These two entities came together and gave birth to children capable of seemingly infinite power. These Endless each rule over their own dimension and are represented by an object of power called a sigil. Their anthropomorphic ideas, patterns, and repeating motifs that are not just the embodiment or manifestation of what they represent, they are the concepts themselves. They're not gods because gods cease to exist when mortals stop believing in them, but as long as sentient beings are alive, so too will the Endless live on. Before existence could be created, the oldest of the Endless, Destiny, was born. He smells of dust and libraries, and leaves no footprints nor casts a shadow. His sigil is a book, specifically paralleling his most defining characteristic, his Book of Destiny. It's bound in the hide of a beast that has never existed, and is said to be the very universe itself. It contains every event, no matter how minuscule, that has ever happened or will happen. Every choice or possible outcome, every secret or mystery, every piece of fact or fiction, literally everything has already been recorded in his book. In the rare moments when Destiny is separated from his tome, he's incomplete and begins to come apart. This could very well be why he seldom leaves his realm. A large garden of mazes, which is also his book in a sense? Again, we are dealing with some big confusing concepts here, so stuff like this is going to be pretty common. Anyway, this labyrinth can't simply be flown above or through, and you can't even use something like X-ray vision to see through it. The paths are long and winding, with literally infinite destinations. You'll never quite know where you'll end up, and destiny will never directly interfere with where a traveler's journey ends. Destiny is blind, but is speculated to have evolved beyond sight. Regardless, he is still able to read the contents of his book, which is bound to his right arm. If this is for protection or to prevent Destiny from escaping it, even he doesn't know. With Destiny in place moving existence forward, his sister Death was born shortly after, as she's there for the birth of every sentient being, as well as their eventual demise. Represented by an Ankh, Death deals with hundreds of thousands of deaths every single day, and and eventually, she will come to all things. At the end of time, when all things finally move on to the afterlife, she'll take destiny into that great unknown, and then finally, herself. As she describes it, when the last living thing dies, her job will be finished. She'll put the chairs on the table, turn out the lights, and lock the universe behind her when she leaves. Despite the workload, Death does manage to get some time to enjoy herself. She likes to travel, but also spend time reading books in her home dimension. A small, white void with a few creature comforts like a couch, teddy bear, and her fish, Slim and Wandsworth. As you've probably noticed, Death is very bubbly and happy-go-lucky, but this wasn't always the case. Early in her life, long before the existence of life on Earth, the stress and pain of her job got to be so much that death simply quit. Nothing died. People, animals, birds, bacteria, fish, ideas, nothing. 
As a result, chaos ensued. Eventually, a young boy found death and convinced her to resume her work, and although she did, her demeanor changed from one of sadness to cold and unfeeling. But one day, Death was taking a small girl to the afterlife who said to her, how would you like it? And this got her thinking. From then on, Death decided that once every century, she would live life as a mortal for 24 hours to better understand life and all of its beauty before ultimately dying and taking herself. This completely changed her perspective, leading to her becoming that plucky goth girl that we know her as today. As the first sentient beings awoke to life, they were met by the most famous of all of the Endless. He goes by many names, Morpheus, Oniris, Lord Lazoral, the Sandman, and so much more. But no matter what you call him, Dream is one of the most powerful entities in existence. He rules over the realms that all beings come to when they slumber. The Dreaming, and its dark shadow, Nightmare. The Dreaming and Nightmare are some of the most important lands in existence, as anything is possible here, and they're the birthplace of the gods. For as powerful as Dream is though, he's notably weaker without his objects of power that he put fragments of his essence into. There's a pouch of infinite sand that can put beings to sleep and manifest dreams, 12 enchanted stones, and a helmet that he crafted from the bones of a fallen god that has since become his sigil. Dream was ultimately destroyed by a powerful witch, but a young boy named Daniel Hall was reincarnated as the new Dream through one of his stones. Daniel is special in that he was actually born inside of the Dreaming itself, and although he has all of the powers of his predecessor, he's still quite inexperienced. With existence being created, so too must it eventually be destroyed, giving birth to the next of the Endless, Destruction. Typically adorned in military garb and his sigil, a sword, destruction represents the annihilation of all things. However, that's pretty much all that we know about him since destruction abandoned his duties when it became clear that living beings would always eventually create and destroy on their own without his guidance. He's seen it time after time on many worlds and civilizations, but it's humans inching towards inevitable weapons of mass destruction that was the final straw for destruction to up and leave. Sure, things are wild and more chaotic without destruction there to guide it, but he's no longer the one that's responsible. By abandoning his realm and duties, destruction has wiped his hands clean of the blood on them and has removed himself from blame. Since packing up, Destruction has traveled all over with his talking dog, Barnabas, trying his hand at creation by practicing various arts. Painting, poetry, cooking, you name it. Next are the twins, Desire and Despair. Represented by a heart, Desire is everything you could ever want. One look into their amber eyes and you're smitten in an instant. Desire is neither a man or a woman, smells of summer peaches, and casts two shadows, one black and sharp-edged, and the other translucent and wavering like a mirage in the heat. Desire is the sole inhabitant of a domain called the Threshold, a sprawling palace made in their own image. But while they love spending time in this mausoleum to their own ego, Desire also adores meddling in the affairs of others. They can make anyone desire or do anything, which frequently puts them at odds with other powerful entities namely their brother, Dream. But just as life can want and desire, so too can it fall into sadness. Represented by the hooked ring that she frequently uses to mutilate herself, despair is often naked and has no smell, but her shadow on the other hand has a musky and pungent odor. Her realm is the opposite side of all mirrors, and she uses them to look in at the lowest moments of people's lives. Additionally, despair has had a hand in some pretty huge events, such as the destruction of Krypton. You might also notice that Despair looks quite a bit different in this scene compared to the other images that I'm using in this video. Well, that's because she was killed off and reincarnated in a similar fashion to Dream as mentioned earlier. In fact, these have been the only two instances that we know of that a member of the Endless has died. Finally, there's Delirium, though that wasn't always the case. You see, long ago, she existed as Delight, but what brought about this change is to this day one of the greatest mysteries of the Endless. Delirium smells of sweat, sour wine, late nights, and leather, and the chaotic swirls that make up her sigil perfectly encapsulate all that Delirium is. She's chaotic, scatterbrained, random, easily distracted and lost within her own thoughts, and lives in an abstract world of constantly shifting shapes and colors. She frequently manifests all sorts of creatures and shapes around her and can even make others join in her delusions. Though, despite the madness that she lives and embodies, Delirium can pull herself together when need be, but it comes at a great strain. 
One thing that's worth mentioning is that while the Endless each represent the concepts they're named after, they also embody and define their opposites as well, which you might have noticed when I was breaking them down. Though everything that has ever happened or will happen is recorded in Destiny's book, it's been shown that it's possible to change one's fate. Hell, a team of heroes called the Challengers of the Unknown were even able to straight up vanish from the book entirely. Death exists in order to define life, which explains why she's there for the birth of every living being. Dream is a mirror to everything that reality is not, and was powerful enough to one time remake all of existence when it was on the verge of falling apart by having people dream up a new existence in unison. While destruction destroys and tears down things around him, so too does he create art. And while the younger siblings are less explored in the Sandman series, we know that desire defines hate, despair defines hope, and delirium? Uh, well, I guess she could represent clarity like when she pulls herself together, but then again, it could also be delight since that was her previous incarnation. Look, these are some big, complicated, and powerful beings, which is why you might be surprised that as for infinite as their influence might be, they do have their limits on occasion. You see, long ago, a mysterious group called the Council of the First Circle came together and established rules for how all things in the universe must operate, though death doesn't seem to be bound by them in the same manner as her siblings. Although there are many rules and regulations, there are currently only two known to us as readers. They mustn't spill blood of their family or else they'll become vulnerable, and if they fall in love with a mortal, then said mortal's downfall is assured. And trust me, with how many women Dream has fallen for over the centuries, there has been a lot of downfall. The rules and restrictions definitely are interesting, but one of my favorite things about these characters is that a lot of things about them are explicitly left unanswered. What are the other rules? We don't know. How could delight turn into delirium? we don't know. These characters are used sparingly, since DC requires the express permission of Neil Gaiman in order to use them in future projects, which as a result means that they've appeared very little since the conclusion of Sandman in 1995. Though even though we don't have all that much new material, it's still a lot of fun to analyze these beings all these years later, and I do hope that we'll one day get more media to dissect sometime in the future. But until then, we can only dream. If any of this has been interesting, then the best place to start would probably be the Sandman. And if you don't have a local comic shop, then I actually have a link in the description for both the physical and digital releases. It actually helps out the channel when you purchase it through that link. So, you know, it, take a look. I would appreciate it. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And if you liked this, then chances are you probably like the DC Multiverse stuff. So I actually have a dedicated playlist for all of my multiversal videos, the Speed Force, Hell, the different universes that are in the multiverse. I'm trying to do more videos like this, so you know, that's a good place to go. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.